first things first, the MVP showed up. He was obviously on watch, high alert. Spotlight was on him. They were down 2-1, a 3-1 deficit to the Memphis Grizzlies. The Warriors are going home early. They knew it. The MVP showed up and responded, hit 50% of his shots, uh, did well from three-point range, was dancing on people. They were moving the basketball, spreading the floor. Uh, so primarily it was because Steph Curry showed up. Um, and he didn't start out early. He started out, found his rhythm, played within the game, and then let the game come to him. He deserves a lot of credit for that. But the other thing is, is that Draymond Green had a big-time game. He showed up. Uh, Harrison Barnes attempted 14 shot, hit four, hit six, but he was aggressive. Andre Iguodala was productive off the bench as well. And collectively, defensively, the Golden State Warriors gave Memphis some of its own medicine. They got up in them, they got up in their face, and they figured out, and kudos to, to, to Steve Kerr, uh, because what happened is they dared Tony Allen to shoot. So essentially on the offensive end of the floor for Memphis, uh, they were playing four against five because they dared Tony Allen to shoot. He didn't want to shoot. We understood why, because he only shot two or nine from the field. And that enabled them to suffocate the lanes and make things difficult, a bit more difficult for both Zach Randolph and Marc Gasol. And the combination of that really put them in a position uh, to really take control of this series to some degree anyway, or really regain some semblance of control. And that's what they did last night defensively and other guys contributing with the key factors. But of course, Steph Curry reminded everybody why he's the league MVP. I'm happy that you chose to give Steve Kerr a little bit of credit for this. Sometimes you've been a little reticent about giving him a whole lot of credit because he obviously got handed a very good basketball team, coached in the past by Mark Jackson. But I thought Steve Kerr deserved credit on two levels last night, strategically and psychologically. And to your strategic point, it was a beautiful move. And I'm sure the staff had a lot to do with it also, not just Steve Kerr, but they assigned bogus as you call him or bogut to tony allen and dared him to shoot and, and bogut just played back in the lane just basically played zone he goes two for nine and only had to uh, only got to play 16 minutes because they needed offense so they got to go with jeff green they got to go with vince they got to put somebody in there who can score and it disrupted memphis's defense but on a deeper psychological level as you well know steve kerr played in a whole lot of high level playoff games for the chicago bulls and the san antonio spurs and I believe that last night he pushed the right psychological buttons to impress upon his team the level of intensity and physicality that was going to be required to win what Steve Kerr called a moment of truth game. And did they ever respond? And, and Draymond really did respond because, as you said, he looked a little overmatched against Zach Randolph until last night. 16 and 10 was not overmatched. Well, it was not overmatched as well, but let me take a moment to address your point about Steve Kerr. I think Steve Kerr has done an outstanding job this year. Um, I do not believe that Mark Jackson deserved to lose his job, but if there was somebody that was going to be his successor, I think by and large, when you talk around the league about people who are uh, cool with Steve Kerr, he's a gentleman, he's an incredibly nice guy, he's very knowledgeable about the game of basketball, he was a former executive with the Phoenix Suns, he's the guy that tried to get Mike D'Antoni Tony to, to grab somebody uh, that, to, to help him on the defensive side of the floor. Uh, and Mike D'Antoni refused to listen to him, which is why Mike D'Antoni is probably looking for a job today instead of coaching in the NBA. Steve Kerr knows the game of basketball. He's a champion five times over. And I never, ever, ever want to come across as somebody that's impugning his credentials and what he brings to the table. Plus, he's a good man, and I'm happy for him. But I'm never going to apologize for the fact that Mark Jackson didn't deserve to lose his job, just like I'm never going to apologize for the fact that Lionel Hollins didn't deserve to lose his job in Memphis. Because when you look at this Coach Yeager, who's done a really mm -hmm. good job with yep. Memphis, what are they doing any differently, Skip? He was supposed to come in there with his, with his analytics crew, and they were supposed to reinvent the wheel and do things differently and run up and down the floor and play a more up-tempo, exciting brand of basketball. Well, what has Memphis do? Three weeks into his tenure as the head coach, he went right back to the same brand of basketball that Lionel Hollins was, was, was coaching. Okay? Get the ball to the big boys. Be in folks' face. Play defense. Play together. He's doing the same things that Lionel Hollins was doing, which means that Lionel Hollins should not have lost his job. So I get the point that these, co these coaches are doing good jobs. I'm happy for them. 
It's not their fault that they were handed the reins that they were handed. I don't hold it against them one bit. But I am never going to apologize when I see uh, particularly the dwindling number of black coaches in the league. Yep. I am never going to apologize when guys who are qualified and who have done good jobs lose their jobs, and I'm not going to be silent about it. I'm never going to apologize for that. Okay. Like it. That's very fair. Bottom line to this discussion, I believe that Golden State just won this series. What do you think? So do I. But we both picked them to win this series anyway. Yep. Yes. We did. Game five is at Golden State on Wednesday. And according to ESPN's Basketball Power Index, the Warriors now have a 74% chance of clinching this series. All right, coming up, the National Football League showed us just how serious they are taking the deflate gate. We're going to return to that topic. So what does their punishment say about the commissioner, Roger Goodell? Jarrett Bell from NFL Insiders will be joining us. First Take is presented by Chase Inc. Is Tom Brady a cheater? <laughs> I don't believe so. I mean, I feel like I've always played within the rules. I would never do anything to break the rules. I didn't, you know, have any, uh, you know, I didn't alter the ball in any way. I don't believe there's an equipment manager in the NFL that would, on his own initiative, deflate a ball without the starting quarterback's approval. I just didn't believe what Tom Brady had to say. There's no way that Tom Brady did not know. There is no way he does not deserve to be suspended. He definitely deserves about four games. Tom Brady is going to be punished more harshly because of Bill Belichick's cheating in the past. Breaking news, Brady has been suspended for the first four games of the season. The Patriots have lost a first round pick in 2016 and a fourth round pick in 2017. The team was also fined one $1 million. First Take is presented by Chase, celebrating small business. Learn more at chase.com slash smallbusinessweek. And in part by the makers of non-drowsy Claritin. Live Claritin clear. The discussion got so heated that NFL analyst Ryan Clark decided to stay. Continuing our discussion on the deflate gate, we were talking about Bill Belichick's legacy, and Stephen A. Smith was about to jump out of the screen because he had something to say. Stephen I don't a. even remember my point, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> all I'm going to tell, all I'm, all I'm, I'm serious. I don't remember my point. All, all I'm going to tell you, all I'm going to say to you is that, in the end, what it comes down to is that Bill Belichick, Ryan Clark. You just a few days ago, I think he was yesterday, you just finished saying, according to the Wells report, you don't believe that Bill Belichick should have been suspended. I still agree so with if that. You don't believe that he, so if you don't believe that he should have been suspended, why should this be attached to Bill Belichick's legacy? We're talking about his, we're talking about his legacy overall. I'm not saying that this tarnished his legacy any more than it was already tarnished, but it's a culture of cheating that he has festered. And I said that on the show yesterday. It's a history mm -hmm. of cheating yeah, through the organization. I'm not I'm not saying Bill Belichick walked into the locker room and said, hey guys, listen, I want to. No, I agree with balls. that. I get that. Yeah. What I'm saying is I get that. Is, what though, I'm saying to you is culture, the one though. point is Spygate, right? Spygate yes. is the one issue, right? Yes. So all I'm saying is based based in terms of judgment, that's all we have on Bill Belichick. Is that not correct? It is. Judgment. Judgment and rules, that is, no question. But okay. right. when I'm oh, go ahead, Skip. So so my conclusion here, Stephen A. Smith, is that because of the culture of cheating established and operated over years by Bill Belichick, I believe that Belichick encouraged the equipment men to make Tom Brady happy because he made it clear from the start he likes a little softer football to throw. So I believe Belichick presided over this, which is why I think they docked him a first-round draft choice because this was another spy gate to them, to both Troy Vincent and Goodell. I mean, how can okay. Belichick not know? As a head coach, I, I assume that, you know, he knows everything that's going on. And Belichick is too particular and detail-oriented and successful to not know every single thing that's going Thank on you, within his franchise. You, you got it right, and they didn't. Four Thank Super Bowl rings. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. That's you finally what put them about. both in their place. <laughs> that's what I came here yeah. to do. Just Took put two them. hours, but you did it. <laughs> Oh, man. In the end, you know, at that thing, in the end, um, it's your team. You run it. And if you set a culture of cheating, if you set a culture of bending the rules, then people under you would do those things. If you set a win-at-all-cost cost culture, that's what people would do. Okay, last quick thought. 
on appeal what happens for Tom Brady. About 20 uh, seconds. I think, I think at best he gets two games. It won't be zero. Okay. I agree with you on that. All right, Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, Brian Clark, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm from Sarifa Pat. Kerry Champion will be back in the chair. Tomorrow, Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., the one-handed catch. Remember him? He'll be right here tomorrow. Well, and collectively, defensively, the Golden State Warriors gave Memphis some of its own medicine. They got up in them, they got up in their face, and they figured out, and kudos to, to, to Steve Kerr, uh, because what happened is they dared Tony Allen to shoot. So essentially on the offensive end of the floor for Memphis, uh, they were playing four against five. Because they dared Tony Allen to shoot. He didn't want to shoot. We understood why, because he only shot two or nine from the field. And that enabled them to suffocate the lanes and make things difficult, a bit more difficult for both Zach Randolph and Marc Gasol. And the combination of that really put them in a position uh, to really take control of this series to some degree anyway, or really regain some semblance of control. And that's what they did last night, defensively and other guys contributing. It was because Steph Curry showed up. Uh, and he didn't start out early. He started out, found his rhythm, played within the game, and then let the game come to him. He deserves a lot of credit for that. But the other thing is, is that Draymond Green had a big-time game. He showed up. Uh, Harrison Barnes attempted 14 shots, hit, hit six, but he was aggressive. Andre Iguodala was productive off the bench is the key factors. But, of course, Steph Curry reminded everybody why he's a league MVP. I'm happy that you chose to give Steve Kerr a little bit of credit for this. Sometimes you've been a little reticent about giving him a whole lot of credit because he obviously got handed a very good basketball team, coached in the past by Mark Jackson. But I thought Steve Kerr deserved credit on two levels last night. First things first, the MVP showed up. He was obviously on watch, high alert. Spotlight was on him. They were down 2-1, a 3-1 deficit to the Memphis Grizzlies. The Warriors are going home early. They knew it. The MVP showed up and responded, hit 50% of his shots, uh, did well from three-point range, was dancing on people. They were moving the basketball, spreading the floor. Uh, so primarily, 